Okay, I want to talk to you about the open attribute table button. Now, I am constantly saying, ah, oh, gee, this is just so exciting. This is what sets GIS apart from other types of computer systems. Well, what I'm about to show you is another one of those thises. We've already looked at this button here, the one that allows us to click on a map, an item on the map, and get information about it. Now, notice that when I just tried to click on this, I got no information. And that's because, first of all, I need to highlight the cadastral map that we're looking for the information within. Then I can select on the individual polygon so that I can find out information on how big it is, you know, its address and, and things like that. Okay, now... This interactive way of selecting information from, from your map is just fine, but there are other ways of doing this, and hence my excitement about showing you this different way. Now, the way I'm about to show you is not new to GIS, but it is new to you. It's the Open Attribute Table button. And if I click on it, it shows us the information that lies behind the table. So why is this so important? Well, I'll give you an example. Imagine that you're a local government and you're interested in the development status of the entire area that you administer. Now, if this table here had an extra column in it called development status and every block had a yes or no in that column, to indicate whether it had been developed or not, we could query all those blocks of land that were developed and we could query all those blocks of land that were undeveloped. We could find out how many hectares or square kilometres or square miles of undeveloped land that we administered. We could relate the cadaster to other GIS maps to find out how many undeveloped parcels are zoned for industrial development how many are zoned for commercial development, or how many for residential development. Now, the list goes on. In simplistic terms, what we're looking at is a database table that at this introductory stage that we're at here, you should imagine as being pretty much equivalent of um, an Excel spreadsheet, except that every row of information, in this case address information, is attached to a polygon on this map. Let's look at the sorts of things that we can do. Go to this drop down menu at the bottom left of the dialog box and from the column filter item, choose address. Now, if I type in 32K, watch what happens. Now, I'll uncheck the case sensitive box and I'll just go apply. And it's found four matching features. Every address starting with 32 space K, okay? If I typed in 32 space KE and then apply, it would find two addresses. Now this type of search that we're doing here is pretty much equivalent to doing a Google map search for addresses. A very important thing to understand, however, is that there's a big difference between the canned data that Google serve you up compared to your own specialist information for your own specialist project. And the example of a council searching for undeveloped land in different zonings that I gave you earlier is one example of that sort of project. Now, to take that example a bit further, a council's environment department might have a GIS map of rare vegetation and ask the question, show me all undeveloped parcels that are zoned for industrial use and have rare species on them. These are the sorts of quantitative queries that you can make through having this database approach. Okay, back to this example. We've found every address beginning with 32K. In fact, we've only filtered them. And if we want to use these buttons up here, we need to select the filters, filtered rows. 
Now, we can do this interactively by clicking on the row numbers to the left. Okay, so let's click everything starting with KE. We can hold down the shift button and select both of them. So that's uh, 32 Keelcape Drive and 32 Kennedy Lane. Now that we have selected them, we can remove our search criteria from here and just go apply and all 15,813 rows um, in the table will display. Okay, now that we've got a selection, we can move this to the top of this, the display so we can see it more easily. And that's what this button here does. We could copy our selection to somewhere else if we wanted to, such as a spreadsheet. We could zoom the map into the selected addresses. And I'll just get rid of this. And we can see only just that parcel there is yellow and that parcel down there is yellow. And perhaps what I'll do is I'll select only one of them and zoom into that so we can see that. We could center the map on that, which it's already centered, but that's a, a, another item that we could do. We could invert the selection to select everything other than the one row that we did have selected. And we could unselect all those if we wanted to. And very trickily, if I was to click on this edit button here, it makes every cadastral block editable. And when a table is editable, you can do a whole bunch of things. Now, referring back to that local government example, I could add a new column to hold development status information about each block. I could, if I called the column the wrong name, I could delete it. And you can open the field calculator. This is the place where a local government would do all those queries that I was just talking about. Now, the dialogue itself is a bit daunting when you're just starting out. So I don't want to talk too much about it now. But there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on in this dialogue that's covered in the full course, however. Anyway, that's all that I wanted to show you at the moment. That's been the open attributes table item. And uh, I suppose I will see you in the next video. Bye.